Hello, it's Gary Fox here, and uh, today we're going to talk about an actual uh, data sheet for an actual op amp. It's an op amp that I have laying around the house. Uh, you can download the data sheet from my site, and that way you'll be looking at exactly the same data sheet that I'm looking at. Uh, you can also probably download this from several other sites, and you may get something that's a little more current. Uh, I ordered this probably four or five years ago, and things may have changed since then. Okay, uh, I've got the data sheet PDF pulled up on my computer. You see where I bought it from, and that's page one. And we're looking at copyrighted material. However, we're uh, doing this for educational purposes, so I don't think we're going to make anybody mad. Besides that, we're advertising for them. Okay, on page two of the PDF, which is page one of the actual data sheet, kind of gives you an overview. It's a little bit of sales uh, literature at that point. Um, but it tells you, you know, it's, it's, it's really great and all that. But then we'll start talking in details about what the uh, problems are. And uh, <clears throat> problems, there's problems with all of them. It's just how much money do you want to pay and then uh, how perfect do you really need. Okay, the first thing I will point out here, we're looking at page one of the actual PDF sorry, of the actual data sheet, comes in three different what they call packages. The package that we're going to use is this N-type package, which is the DIP. And that stands for dual inline pins, if I remember right. And uh, that's the one that we can plug into our experimental uh, test, test board, our breadboard. It's the easiest one for us amateurs to work with. The uh, newer, and what did I just do? The newer one uh, has this, what they call surface mount connections. Uh, that's kind of tough for us experimental types to work with. Okay, at the bottom of that page, you've got a, a picture here that shows how the pinout is. And that picture is looking from the top, and you can tell that because it's got this little indent, indentation here. And uh, that lets you know that you're looking from the top. If you were looking from the bottom, obviously all the numbers would get swapped from left to right. So, uh, something to always remember when you're working with electronics. Which side of the board are you working on? Component side or connection side? Okay. Uh, we're going to go to this second page of the uh, actual data sheet, page 3 of the PDF. And we've got a schematic of the insides of this thing. Oh, I just point out, uh, there's actually two op amps on this one particular chip. So when we look at a schematic, we're only looking at one of the op amps. Okay, what do I want to point out here? Here's your non-inverting input and your inverting input and you see here's the power supply over here and there's stuff between the power supply and the inputs and there's stuff between the negative power supply and the inputs. There's a whole bunch of stuff between the input and the output and that's where they create the amplifier part of it and then right here at the output there's stuff between the actual output connection and the things that are creating the output. So, uh, those are all going to become important, as I call it, stuff. Uh, it's a little too complicated to deal with, at least for what we all know, and even even if I were to spend, a, I'd have to spend a whole bunch of time to figure it out, and we really don't need to. It's all there on the chip. We don't have to deal with it. Okay, second page, we continue on down. We've got the power supplies. It tells you this is absolute maximum rating. So you can go plus or minus 22 on those power supplies. Normally it's plus or minus 15. 
uh, with the uh, power supply I'm going to be using. I'm not going to get quite that much. And then your input voltage can go up to 30 and uh, you can have a differential input voltage of plus or minus 15. Power dis dissipation. What that number means. That's how much power that this thing can uh, internally produce uh, and it's creating heat. And the idea of that is that if you have power dissipation, if you have too much power trying to go out, it will cause the thing to get hot. It will burn as TJ, which is the junction temperature. Uh, it'll be above what it should be. And uh, the, you have sizzling silicon <laughs> eventually. Uh, it basically will burn it out. Okay, it says the output short circuit could be infinite uh, if, if an infinite amount of time. And that's interesting. There must be that it short it it shuts itself down. So output short circuit, usually you draw a maximum amount of power and you'd be way above this limit here. Uh, so it has some kind of shutdown circuit in it. But uh, uh, you could get somewhere between a short circuit and less than a short circuit. Uh, you could get this power dissipation above what it is. We're going to run into other problems with the power anyhow uh, with uh, what our loads are and we'll find those out in a little bit. There's a temperature range where it can run. We'll be using the C unit. Uh, it's cheaper and it can go from 0 degrees C which is freezing up to 70 degrees C which is pretty dang hot. Hotter than I want to be hanging around in. So that's it. It also you can only store it within certain temperature range, or it'll cause it to uh, tear up even without it being uh, powered up. So anyhow, we're going to be within all those maximum power ratings, but that's really interesting stuff that you need to know about. This is the one that we're going to spend a lot of time on, but we're not going to do it quite yet. Um, and then. The next page there has some stuff where they do a, a test circuit. Most of this has to do with AC signals. You see where it's talking about frequency, and that means basically they're dealing with an AC signal. And we haven't got to AC yet. However, here's the two that I do want to talk about on this chart. Load resistance. Remember the stuff we had between our power supply and getting it to the output pin, including there was a 25 ohm resistor in there, if I remember the schematic right. Uh, this is saying that with plus or minus 15 power supplies, that depending upon what the load resistance is, we can get close to 15, but we can't ever get all the way to 15. And uh, as that load resistance gets to be less, that voltage is going to drop. In other words, there is an output resistance. And uh, that output resistance works exactly the same as way back here when I talked about uh, ideal power sources versus real power sources, and we talked about the battery. Uh, there's a resistance in there that's going to drop a voltage before it ever gets to that output pin, and that depends upon what the uh, current is that it's trying to deliver. Here they're trying to deliver the maximum of current that 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 uh, resistor can handle and it's causing a voltage drop. Basically what this is saying, uh, 2K is probably your bottom limit on your load resistance, the input to your uh, next thing. 10K you get pretty close to what you want. Typical the way power way op amps are used and it's similar on the uh, See, this was on the positive voltage swing. It's similar on the negative voltage swing. Uh, typically, the way op amps are used, they use a plus or minus 15 volt power supply, but they only assume that the uh, output is going to be at max plus or minus 10 volts. So they've got 5 volts of headroom in there. And, uh, and that's a real good way to, uh, to design. It's kind of a safety factor if you want to look at it that way, but it's Headroom is probably the best way to think about it. Okay, 
Toward the end of it, we got these uh, these uh, mechanical diagrams showing you what the uh, what the sizes are of the uh, various packages. Let me go to uh, we'll shrink it down here just a little bit. Big one that I want to point out is this what they call E4 versus E. E4 is where they started bending the pins down. E is what the width of the pins are. If you notice that E, we'll do it in inches, it's a 0 0.313, but E4 is 0 0.3, 3 tenths of an inch. Uh, your pin thing for the uh, for the breadboards is designed on one tenth of an inch increments, and we'll talk more about that in the next episode. Uh, but it's designed on tenth of increments, so you have to actually bend these little legs a little closer together before you can stick it into the uh, socket. And that's any socket that you're going to stick these things in. It's just the way they come, so you have to deal with it. This is the uh, dip package. You'll see that all these distances are also a tenth of an inch uh, spacing. And so if you're doing this with CAD, often you want to put the grid up there on there, but you want the grid spacing at a tenth of an inch, and it'll work. Uh, since then, I think they're starting to make everything more metric with these newer packages. But uh, back in the day when all this was there in the U.S., we had the world by the tail and <laughs> so they had to put up with us now we're having to put up with them <laughs> it just is the way it is uh, <laughs> it'll change who knows uh, and then that's pretty much it this is the other package so that's pretty much the whole data sheet now we're going to go back to uh, page two of the actual data sheet and we're going to deal with these things and I'm going to expand my window back to page width because I'm an old guy and I like to be able to read things easily. And, um, and man, we're running in out of time. Okay. Remember that we said, we already talked about the output. We said the uh, gain of the amplifier ideally would be infinite. Well, it's not infinite. It's uh, It'll put out 50 volts per millivolt or 20 volts. 200 volts per millivolt. That's pretty daggone close to infinite, but that ain't infinite, so there is a value there. We're not going to get anywhere near having that because we're putting feedback in all our circuits that's going to cut the gain back down. But it ain't infinite. <laughs> okay. One of the other things that we talked about, and let me see, I got a set of notes here. Sorry for all the clicking, that's me flipping papers. Okay, input resistance. We said that input resistance would be infinite. Well, it's not. It's about anywhere from 300,000 to, to uh, 2 mega ohms. Okay, capacitance we haven't dealt with yet. The next one is channel separation, and that's a big number. That's just saying that one channel doesn't affect the other. Remember, this thing has two, uh, two amplifiers on one chip says they don't affect each other. Okay, we've got a thing here called voltage offset. We've been assuming that if uh, both inputs are at zero, uh, that it will put zero out. Well, it turns out there's a little bit of offset between these two, uh, these two inputs. It's not much, but it could be up to five millivolts difference. And if we've got a lot of gain, that could show up on our output. Here's the big one. We assumed that there was no current going into the uh, amplifier, uh, that it had infinite input impedance. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't draw much. It draws in the nanoamp range, but that could be enough to affect us if we have a really high uh, output impedance on our, uh, on our device that's feeding this. Even worse, it could have a bias. It could be the one pin is drawing more than the other one. And it says typically it does. Now this is in the nano amper range. So that's 10 to the minus um, 10 to the minus ninth. Uh, so that's way down there in the amps. So it won't affect us 
unless we have a really, really high input impedance. And I'm going to see if I can generate one of those when we do the actual uh, testing, which should be the next, the next uh, post. Anyhow, uh, that's kind of an introduction to, uh, to reality here, what we have to deal with. Uh, there's a lot of other numbers in there that we haven't got into, but uh, we, will, we will deal with those later once we get into AC. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> I doubt if you did, but uh, if you're going to play with these things, it's something that you need to... Uh, need to start being aware of. You can get a data sheet for just about every one of these, uh, usually from the supplier you bought it from, which is what I did in this case. Appreciate you listening. Hopefully you got something out of it. Thank you. This is Gary Fox.